Hey, it's another great afternoon for Maryland lacrosse. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Bruce Posner. Maryland rolls 20 to 12 in Ann Arbor. Bruce, we talked multiple times during the game, but I'll let you tell everybody else. What'd you see today? I saw a game that was 20 to 12, and it just didn't seem like Maryland played well. And this is this is what I talk about, the old rat poison. In other words, we get blinded by how good can a team play, and you think that Maryland didn't play that well. The faceoffs were close, uh, 19 to 17. That hasn't happened all year. Uh, the ground balls were close. Uh, but the goalies, I mean, the saves were even. I thought the Michigan goalie might have had some better saves. Turnovers were even. Like you said, everything was even, except the game was never in doubt. And that's what we call Maryland lacrosse. Well, it, it early on, uh, very close. But Maryland superstars, it was carried by the superstars today early. Uh, was Nauskas was great. Keegan Kahn was great. Just when you thought Michigan might have a chance, Luke Weirman with his uh, win at the Fogo and he scores. By play of the game, and, and the, if you watch it on Big Ten Plus, even the Michigan kids there said it, it was the Zapatello diving in front of the goal as McNaney uh, took the ball up near midfield. There was a turnover, and Ajax Zapatello flies in front of the goal to deny a Michigan shot. What part right of the play. game was that? Mid-third quarter, it, it Mid really third. wasn't a turning point in the game. It's just the type of play that shows you when they talk about how hard they play, about the creator's game, about how selfless they are. It's just one of those plays that you go, wow, that's Maryland lacrosse right there. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Four Gates. We make your company work. I'm Arthur Smith with Viner Four Gates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. Yeah, I got two plays I thought turned the game for, for certain. Maryland was losing two to one, and Michigan could have been more than that. Michigan uh, had more, let's say, face-off wins early. And then our guy, all right, number eight, Roman Pugliese, comes down and fires the tie, the tying goal. I think it might have been the one that put us in the lead. And then a little bit later, Terps are up by two, and Luke Weirman. I say it all the time, and Tillman calls it the big juice. Luke Werman wins the faceoff, goes down and scores his sixth goal of the year. And, and it was followed by two goals by John Kepper, which is pretty oh, unusual. Yeah. All right. That, that, as far as gameplay, the Gepper goal, <laughs> that sequence there of uh, non traditional goal scores was huge. Look, Michigan was. You said they played statistically in the game. The 50-50 balls that usually go 90% to Maryland were actually 50-50. Faceoffs were 50-50. It seemed to get Kevin Conroy, well, it seemed to get under his skin. Bruce, did you hear anything of what he said during the game? Nothing I could repeat on the air, okay? So uh, I don't know what he said. What he was upset about, he was accusing the Terps of constantly uh, – having moving picks, all right? And uh, did they? I don't know. I plan to ask Tillman about it afterwards. But that was the problem. That was the accusation. And uh, I, I just don't know. Quick update, Maryland women are winning 15-6, uh, to six, similar score. Another game that was kind of like that. But I thought that... Well, well while we're updating the scores... It is still Richmond over Virginia. It might be over by now. It was 16-13 a minute ago, Richmond over yeah, UVA. It, it's got to be nearly over. And that is that a big upset, Wayne? Yeah, I think so. I think so. To be honest and, with you. And Trip Talks, Mason Viner's on the air in Jacksonville as the Jacksonville Dolphins are in rank number 12 in the country in the Nike poll. They're number nine. They lead high point by one in a lightning delay with about 3.15 to go in the game. Well, but let's look at the scoring today. Uh, uh, Logan Wazowskis, three and three. Donville, three and one. Malivar, one and two. 
Puglis one, Damayo one, King and Khan three, Gepper two, Jack Chorus one, uh, Luke Weirman one, and the leading goal, goal scorer of the day, number 55, Owen Murphy. And I will take some credit for predicting that because he had a, he didn't have a lot of time last week. I, I, I it seemed like he wasn't in the game. And, but then, and then the this game. week, he becomes he in the game. Ball. Oh, it becomes an attack. He stays on the field for a series there or two. Malibur ends up playing midi. So it's a good reward for Owen Murphy. Uh, yes, he's been lighting it up a bit. So at the national level, the outside the, the Turp Talk house here, Maryland looking like the clear, clear number one, clear favorite. Is that, uh, do you have that feeling that this, this is it, or is that rat poison still the dominant feeling? Well, I still fear, uh, by the way, I'm getting tired of watching this video where my head's spinning. I mean, they were in the wrong half of the field half the time on BTN+. Plus. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Maryland's clearly number one. Uh, are they going to get problems from... Ohio State records and Johns Hopkins. I wouldn't be surprised if the games were like this. You saw, you saw the veracity of Michigan, and the ground balls were wars. And uh, the one separation was that hit by Roman at the end of the game, which I hope doesn't isn't looked at further. But I didn't see it was that dirty. But I they, saw it got much rougher later on. The frustration. He's I still guess. hurting from the hit he received last week when he got Those knocked were forward. some good football hits. The hit yeah. that he got last week at Penn State, and this one, uh, he, he leveled the young man at midfield probably unnecessarily. So I know you have to get to the press conference uh, with Coach Tillman, and uh, so it probably gives us about two minutes to wrap this up. Uh, biggest takeaway from today, and what do you expect uh, for next week's contest? My biggest well, takeaway from the day is the team did not play that great, and yet still won easily. And uh, it, it's it's worrisome. No, I tell you, Wayne, we're looking at it too close. They're not perfect. You know what I mean? And we saw some of the chinks today in the armor, and they're just not a perfect team. No team is. Uh, good face-offs and a great goalie can make a game close. And I thought that Michigan had that today, but it wasn't close. So it's just that Maryland's that good. Right. My takeaway, and, and once again, the Big Ten Network guys picked up on this, is Penn, um, Michigan's midfield had nothing today. And I'll go back to my the un, the hidden strengths of this team, even though it's on display every week, is these defensive middies. You brought up the scoring from Gepard, but, man, they take other guys out of the game. And your Zapatello... Um, and the rest, and Matt Rahill, and and long number forty three, the long poles are just right. fantastic. Brett Maycar, yeah. Listen, Gepper, if he's not the best long stick midi in the game, I want to meet. I want to see the guy who is. All right, not only not only goals. That's you know part. That's just irrelevant. It's it's his ground balls, and I want to say one other thing. If you think back to Brown when Lars Tiffany was there, do you remember what they were doing that nobody else was doing? They were letting the long poles play offense. All right. They had a couple long poles who were great at offense. We might have seen the start of that today with John Gepper because Gepper was unbelievable. And Maryland was playing. You, you said they were trying different things early in the game. And one of the things that they were certainly trying is to get Michigan to commit to a, a basically a line change while the play was going on. So the Maryland, with Weirman and with Gepard, they faked that they were coming off. Then they stayed on. Then they came off. Then they went back in. And at some point, it got to Michigan and gave Maryland some early goals. Maryland certainly playing with the full roster there. They've got tricks you talked about one that I look, I'm going to look for in the final four that we, we're not even going to talk about now. Right. Tricks up the sleeve that Maryland still has that we've seen. Uh, it's been a great season so far, and Maryland comes home. And I, we got these three big games to close this out, and I'm rat poisoned or not, still looking to go undefeated here. 
and it'll take us to the Big Ten tournament. I know you've got to go. 